So a lot of you guys are getting deeper and deeper into mycology. You're starting to work with agar. And a lot of you guys know I have plenty of videos to showing you guys how to make light malt extract, carbon agar, antibiotic agar, all that stuff. But most of the time I use light malt extract. But I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys saying, Willie, is there something comparable to light malt extract? that I could use. I either can't get it or it's not in stock or it's too expensive or I just don't want to use that. Is there something else I could use? The answer to that is yes. There's many other types of agar that you could actually use, but one of the most common is PDA, potato dextrose agar. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I make my potato dextrose agar the old school way, the right way, the fun way. Let's jump into it. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Chip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time here on Willie's World, welcome to the Trip Team family. This right here, that's what it's about. As always, if you guys want to get deeper and deeper into chemistry or mycology, you know, step by step, how to actually do this, then go check out my Patreon right here. There's a private library where the videos are only available there and it's no holds bar. So I don't hold nothing back. We go step by step through everything. I'm talking cacti, cubes, Penelius, whatever you guys want to learn is in that library. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Go check it out. We also have a private chat room with a marketplace and you can ask me questions. I'm in there every single day. We do monthly Zoom meetings. You guys can get merchandise. You guys can get stickers, all that stuff. But in order to do that, you have to go check out the Patreon. It's the safest way for me to put those videos out. Every other place I tried to put those videos out kept shutting them down. So you guys need to go check that out right there to watch those videos. There's brand new videos that come out every single month that are only released right there. And of course, my new Instagram is right here, TTF underscore Willie. Make sure you guys go give me a follow. If you see somebody else that says Willie Michael or this, they're not me, they're fake, they're scammers. So do not believe it. There's plenty of fake accounts out there. This is my real account, TTF underscore Willie. If you guys wanna go check it out, definitely do that. We just did a crazy giveaway. We have another giveaway coming up. So if you guys wanna get in on that, make sure you go check out my Instagram. All right, but enough with the self-promotion. You know, if we have to do it, that's what we do when we create these videos. It's your support that keeps them going. I don't like doing it, but that's how we keep things going. So make sure you guys check that stuff out and let's jump into this video. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys the proper original way to make potato dextrose agar. Now, what is potato dextrose agar used for? It's used for everything that you would see somebody using agar for. There's no difference. The only difference is we're using a different nutrient than light malt extract. There's many other types of agar out there that use different types of nutrient bases, but in this one, we're gonna be using potatoes. That's right. Like literally, you could just walk into your fridge, grab some potatoes, and do this. It's so easy, it's a lot of fun, and this is the correct way to do it. Now, if you guys go online, you're gonna see a bunch of different texts out there talking about using the instant mashed potatoes, the potato flakes. That works too. If you guys want to follow those texts, those will work absolutely fine. But this is so simple and easy and readily available to most people at home that you're really not going to have to go out of your way. I don't have instant mashed potatoes in my house. I have potatoes, but I don't know what you guys have on hand at your house. But if you did have the instant mashed potatoes, you could use those texts as well. At the end of the day, it's all potato dextrose agar. So you could start taking clones. You could start putting samples to agar. You could see if they're clean. You could start isolating, coming to monocultures, all that good stuff. Once you guys start working with genetics, you can really refine your craft and determine what your outcome's gonna be every single time. That's why we use agar so much in mycology and gourmet mushroom cultivation, whatever the case may be, that it's really, there's no replacement for agar. Agar is the way to go when you wanna start working genetics. There's things like liquid cultures and slurries and all that stuff, and all that stuff's good and you're gonna use all that, a combination of it, 
But agar, there's really no replacement for it. And it works the best when you guys are trying to clean up your genetics and make the best possible outcome. With that said, let's talk about what you're gonna need to follow along in this video. Now, for this video, we're gonna be making 20 dishes. Now, if you guys wanna take this recipe right here, double it, triple it, whatever the case may be, you could do that. Just keep the same ratios. But for this specific recipe, it's gonna make roughly about 20 regular size Petri dishes. Now, regular size Petri dishes are 90 millimeter or 100 millimeter. You know, that's typically what's considered the normal size Petri dish. Now, there is smaller Petri dishes. If you guys wanna use that, that's perfectly fine. I know a lot of people use the little condiment cups with the lids and stuff like that. Use whatever you have available to you and whatever you're comfortable with, but this will make 20 dishes. The first thing you're gonna need is some potatoes. Now, this is just regular potatoes. We're gonna need exactly 200 grams of potatoes. So once you have a potato, peel it, wash it, and cut it up into medium-sized pieces. You don't want them too big, you don't want them too small. You wanna cut up enough to weigh out 200 grams of potatoes. The next thing you guys are gonna need is your Petri dishes. So I'm gonna be using a sleeve of 90 millimeter Petri dishes. These are sterile. Every time you pull out a new sleeve of Petri dishes, make sure there's no rips or tears in the sleeve. If there is any rips or tears, you can't use those Petri dishes because they're no longer sterile. Petri dishes are sterilized with gamma radiation, and as soon as that bag is open, it's no longer sterile. The next thing you guys are gonna need is your agar agar powder. Now, if you guys buy solid agar, you're gonna have to powder it up. But for this tech right here, you're gonna need 10 grams of agar agar powder. The next thing you're gonna need is your PC safe beaker, just like I have right here. Now, if you guys don't have a PC safe beaker to pressure cook or sterilize your agar mix, that's perfectly fine. You guys could use a regular one quart mason jar. It will work perfectly fine. People do it all the time. But if you have a PC safe beaker, it's gonna work best. The next thing you're gonna need is a mason jar. So the reason why we're gonna use this mason jar is when we're done boiling down our potatoes, we're gonna dump everything into this mason jar that we're gonna be using for our agar mix. Another thing you could also do is if you have coffee filters, number two coffee filters, some people like to actually strain out their mix so that they have less debris floating around in their agar. If you guys wanna do that, it's perfectly fine, but it's not required. If you cut the potatoes to the right size, not too big, not too small, you shouldn't have much debris floating around in your agar in the end. You guys are also gonna need 1500 milliliters of water. Now this water doesn't need to be purified, it don't need to be distilled, it could be tap water. If you wanna use distilled or purified, that's perfectly fine, but just remember, we're gonna pressure cook it, we're gonna sterilize it anyways, so it really doesn't matter. Just some clean water, 1500 milliliters. The last thing you guys are gonna need is a pressure cooker. So we're gonna be using a pressure cooker because we're gonna be PCing to sterilize our agar mix. Now, if you guys don't have a pressure cooker, you could still do this. You could do steam sterilization, you could do boil sterilization. Some people even put it in the microwave to sterilize it. Because it's a liquid, it sterilizes a lot easier than a solid. So like, let's take grains for instance. It's gonna take a PC to sterilize grains, but when it comes to liquid, like liquid cultures, agar, stuff like that, it's gonna sterilize extremely, extremely fast and easy because it's a liquid. So you have plenty of choices for sterilization. Once you guys have all that together, you guys are pretty much ready. We can jump right into this. So the first step you wanna do is grab your potatoes, you wanna peel them, you wanna cut them up, and you wanna make sure you have 200 grams of potatoes. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, if you wanna take this recipe and double it, triple it, quadruple it, whatever the case may be, you guys would just increase the amount of this exact recipe. The only thing you won't have to do is increase the amount of potatoes. 200 grams of potatoes is more than enough to do over 100 dishes of agar. So the only thing you would increase is the water, the amount of agar you're using. That's it, nothing else would change. So you guys would just double it, triple it, quadruple it, whatever the case is, but you guys won't add another 200 grams of potatoes for another 20 dishes or you know 400 grams for another 40 dishes whatever the case is it will stay 200 grams 
all the way up to 100 dishes. Now, if you guys want to do more than 100 dishes of PDA agar, then just add another 100 grams of potatoes for every 100 over the first 100. So if you guys want to do 200 Petri dishes, then you guys will use 300 grams of potatoes. Once you guys have your potatoes all weighed out, all cut up, you guys are all set and you can move on to the next step. The next thing you guys wanna do is you wanna measure out 10 grams of agar powder. Once you guys have the 10 grams all weighed out, just put it off to the side. We're gonna be using it in a couple minutes. Now what you guys wanna do is you wanna take 1500 milliliters of water and you wanna add it to a pot. Once you guys have the 1500 milliliters of water, then you wanna take your 200 grams of potatoes and you wanna add it to the water. Now what you wanna do is you wanna bring it over to the stove, you wanna turn the heat on high. Once you guys get a nice boil going, you guys wanna reduce the heat and you wanna start your timer. You wanna boil the potatoes for one hour. Just make sure that the heat's not too high or you guys will run out of water before the one hour is up. So once it starts boiling, turn the heat down just to maintain a nice boil. You don't want it boiling, you know, aggressively. You want a nice, easy boil. In one hour, you guys could come back and we could move forward. All right, guys, so as you can see, we boiled our potatoes for one hour on a nice, easy boil. You'll see that a lot of the water has reduced from it boiling. That's perfectly fine and that's absolutely normal. So now what you wanna do is you wanna measure out 500 milliliters of the water potato mix. Now try to leave all the solids behind. You just want the water. You don't want any of the solid pieces of potato. And this is where it comes in handy to use a coffee filter if you guys aren't sure of your pouring skills. So if you guys wanna filter the water through a coffee filter, that's perfectly fine. In the end, you need 500 milliliters to move forward. So now that we have our 500 milliliters of potato dextrose water, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that to our beaker. So this is gonna be our PC safe beaker. If you guys don't have this, you could use a mason jar with a lid, that's perfectly fine. You wanna add it to whatever you're gonna be sterilizing it in. Now that we have our water inside of our beaker, now we're gonna take our 10 grams of agar powder and we're gonna add it to the water. Once you guys add the 10 grams to the 500 milliliters of potato dextrose water, now you wanna put your lid on and you wanna shake it up for about five minutes. If you guys have a magnetic stirrer and you wanna throw it on a magnetic stirrer, that's perfectly fine, but just shaking it up really good will do the job. Once you guys have everything all shaken up, all mixed up, there's no more dry clumps inside your beaker or your mason jar, now we need to sterilize. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it inside my pressure cooker. It's gonna go in there at 15 PSI for 30 minutes. Once you guys sterilize, however you're gonna sterilize, we could come back and we could pour our dishes. Now, once the 30 minutes has went by, you guys wanna remove your weight from your pressure cooker, let all the steam go out, and you wanna try to pull that agar out of there as fast as possible. You don't wanna let it sit in there for hours because it will continue to sterilize as the PC cools down. So remove the weight, let all the excess pressure escape, and then you guys wanna pull your beaker or your mason jar out of the pressure cooker. Now what you wanna do is you wanna bring that to your flow hood or wherever your workspace is. If you don't have a flow hood, you could use a still air box. They work perfectly fine, especially if you follow sterile tech, you're gonna have a perfectly fine time. Now, some people don't mind doing open air pours, but I just find that doing all this work and then pouring it open air is just kinda reckless. I don't like doing it, but if that works for you, all the power to you, you could do open air pours. I just see that the contamination rate is too high doing it that way. Now, what I like to do is I like to let my agar sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. I want it to cool down. I don't want it to solidify. I don't want it to get solid. I just want to let it cool down long enough that it's still liquid, but we could handle it to pour our dishes. Now, another reason why we're doing this is because the more we let it cool down, the less condensation we're gonna have in our Petri dishes. So if you let it cool for 20 to 30 minutes before you actually pour your dishes, it's gonna work out a lot better for you guys that are fighting condensation inside your Petri dishes. Now that the 20, 30 minutes have passed, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop pouring our dishes. So everything is completely sterile, we're using gloves, we used hand sanitizer, 
we wiped down and disinfected our workspace, our flow hood is going, or we're inside of our still air box. And what I like to do is I like to stack my dishes in little stacks and I pour them one after another. Now, I'm not measuring anything out. I eyeball everything. I've been doing this so long. I have a pretty good idea of how much goes in each Petri dish. But pretty much what you're looking for is more than enough agar so that it's not thin and it doesn't dry out over time. But you don't want too much to where it's too close to the lid and your mycelium will have no room to grow around. So you just have to find that perfect medium. Now, after I pour each Petri dish, what I like to do is I stack them. If you guys stack your poured Petri dishes, that's also going to help fight condensation. Because the reason we get condensation is because of a difference in temperature from the outside and the inside of the dish. So if we stack the dishes, what ends up happening is all the dishes in the middle of that stack are going to even out temperature a lot better. You might have a little bit of condensation on the top Petri dish, whatever one ends at the top but it's gonna be far less as you go down that stack. You're gonna have less and less condensation, especially if you let it cool in the first place. So as you guys can see, I poured all my dishes and I was able to pour 19 dishes out of the 20, just eyeballing it. So if you guys do it right, you guys could actually hit the 20 Petri dishes. I must have poured a little bit too much on my dishes and I was left with one Petri dish in the end. Now, since I don't have no more agar to pour, this dish is just gonna go into the trash. We can't reuse this because like I said, it's open, it's not sterile no more. So if you try to pour agar in here, let's say tomorrow or in a couple hours, the chances are it's gonna get contaminated. So it's better just to toss it. Now, once you have everything all stacked, what I like to do is I like to take my sleeve and I like to put it over my agar dishes. One, this is gonna help with any contaminants that might be in the room that you're working in, but it's also gonna help regulate the temperature and reduce condensation. It's gonna work as an insulation of sorts. So if you just slide it over the top of your stack, it's gonna help out a lot. Now, in about an hour or so, our Petri dishes should be completely cooled. You guys could check them as you go along. If you need a little bit more time, just let them sit a little bit longer. But once they solidified and they're cool to the touch, they're ready to use. Now, if you guys wanna vacuum seal them and put them inside your refrigerator for later use, you guys could do that. If you wanna use them all right now, that's perfectly fine. It's completely up to you. But that's the simple old school way to make PDA. It's very, very easy and it's very effective. So if you guys don't wanna use light malt extract, that's perfectly fine. You guys could use PDA. You guys could do antibiotic agar with PDA. You guys could do carbon agar with PDA. It really doesn't matter. Like I said, it's all agar in the end. We're just using a different nutrient. And there you go, guys. That's how I make my PDA. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I just want to tell you guys, thank you for all your love and support. And I love hearing suggestions from you guys on what videos you would like to see. Remember, I see all you guys' comments. I know you guys are suggesting some really good videos. And most of those videos I already have, but they're in my private library. Remember, I can't release everything, especially going into great detail here on YouTube. We have to play by the rules. It just is what it is. But if you guys want those videos, the really good stuff, Patreon is the place to go. And I thank every single one of you guys that support me over there because without you guys, none of this would happen. We're self-supported. We're self-sufficient. We don't make any money on YouTube. So you guys helping me out over there is helping to create new videos, new content for everybody. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I love you guys. I'm Willie Maiko. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.